What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this past week was full of announcements and releases from Apple. So we had the spring loaded event on Tuesday the 20th where Apple of course announced several new products including the AirTags, the M1 iMac, the M1 iPad Pro, the purple iPhone 12 and more. And after that event, we did end up getting the final build of iOS 14.5, the RC build for developers, which of course is the final before the public gets the final release next week. And then on the next day, on Wednesday the 21st, we got macOS Big Sur 11.4 beta 1, but no other software updates. That is until the next day on Thursday, where we got iOS 14.6 beta 1, watchOS 7.5 beta 1, and tvOS 14.6 beta 1. And then finally on Friday, we had pre-orders for the AirTags and the purple iPhone 12 go live. And if you follow me on Twitter, you would know that I did in fact pre-order both of those. So yeah, basically every day this week, something new and exciting happened related to Apple. But of course, in this video, we're going to be discussing how iOS 14.5 are has been running on my main device here, my iPhone 12 Pro, along with how iOS 14.6 Beta 1 has been running on my iPad Pro, which I use every day, and this iPhone 12, which I have been using a lot as well, trying to find new features and changes on it. So we're going to be talking performance, battery life, additional changes, and more, just as I do every single weekend here on the channel. So let's first talk about some additional new features and changes. And of course, that's going to come in iOS 14.6 beta 1. I've not found any new additional changes on iOS 14.5, the RC build, because it's pretty much the same as beta 8. So we're going to set that off to the side for now and talk about iOS 14.6 beta one and the first thing actually is a ui change inside of the music application so if we go into music if we go into a song here i'll actually pull up 14.5 here as well so you can see the difference if you take a look at the time underneath the song where you like scrub where you could see you know how much time has elapsed and how much time is remaining right there you could see that the font is smaller so it's a smaller size right there you're gonna have to look really close and you may have to actually have these side by side for you to see it yourself but also the volume indicator down there at the very bottom is smaller as well so it seems like quite a few things have just gotten a little bit smaller a little bit more compact here in the now playing view inside of the music application i think it actually looks cleaner than it did in 14.5 in previous versions now before we go any further i do want to talk about my wallpapers because a lot of people ask me in my past couple of videos for this wallpaper right here and you might be wondering about this wallpaper and kind of just where you can download these and i post every wallpaper in the discord server so if you go into discord the apple den right here and go all the way to the bottom to wallpapers right here you will see where all the wallpapers are posted and this is the full quality you can just download you can see the download button up in the top right you could download all of these wallpapers right there now i do also have a perk for members of the channel where i release like a wallpaper dump where it's all of my wallpapers i usually have like 15 to 20 wallpapers in there and i will be posting that today on the community tab for members but since so many of you guys asked for this wallpaper specifically i will leave that link down in the description below of this video just a direct download so you don't have to go to discord or anything like that i'll also link this wallpaper as well since you know a lot of people have been asking and i don't just want to make you guys always go to discord but just for future reference my wallpapers are always posted in discord and of course that is a member perk of the channel here as well when you click that join button down below you just kind of get a pack of them all so you don't have to sift through different videos and different uh you know posts in discord so so I just wanted to address that really quick before we move forward. So anyways, moving on, I did also want to address the AirPlay to HomePod feature, which I've complained about a lot in iOS 14.5 for a good reason. I mean, it was extremely annoying. This is a feature I use every single day. So when I'm in music right here and I go to AirPlay and I go to, let's just say the office, which is the HomePod right in front of me. In 14.5, this was not only extremely slow just to load up the song onto that HomePod, but when I would press play and pause and play and pause and go to the next song or previous song, it was extremely laggy. I showed this in multiple videos, like it would take forever to go to the next song. You know, sometimes when I would go out of music and go back in, it would show like a different song on my now playing that wasn't even playing on the HomePod. There were just a ton of issues with this feature in 14.5, but 14.6, has definitely improved this feature. Not only is it faster and there's less lag. I mean, you could see when I switch songs, there is still a tiny bit of lag, but it's not near as bad as it was in 14.5. And I've not had the issue where it switches songs and I have to go in here into this menu, you know, long press, go here and then click on office to get back to the song I was playing and control my music. So also the queue is not as laggy anymore as it was in 14.5 
Also, I've not had the music cue bug either. So, you know, where the first song, you cannot move it in the queue. I've not had that one time here in 14.6. So I'm pretty sure that has been resolved as well in this update, which is great. And that was something I mentioned in my what's new video, but after spending more time with it, I definitely can tell that that has been improved here. And that's pretty much the extent of what's changed here in 14.6 beta one, at least additionally from my first what's new video on this update. So really not a ton changed. Hopefully beta two does bring a little bit more, you know, visual changes. I'm not expecting too much from a 0.6 update, especially after 14.5 had so many features in it but it would be nice to see maybe something a little bit different in settings or something like that. Now, going back to 14.5 RC very briefly, I did also want to talk about the battery health feature, the recalibration tool here for the iPhone 11 series. So I had my 11 Pro Max here on the RC build of 14.5 and you can see it still has not finished the recalibration of the battery. So I'm assuming that's because I just simply don't use this device enough. But if you guys have finished the recalibration process on your iPhone 11, let me know your results down below because I've seen a lot of really good results of the battery capacity going up by like three or 4%. So there are a few people who the battery capacity goes down or stays the same, but for most people, this improves quite a bit. Over the past couple of days, I've seen you guys, you know, send me messages on Twitter uh, talking about how your maximum capacity has improved greatly after this new feature came out. This pretty much bug fix came out for the iPhone 11 series on 14. 0.5. Now, as far as existing bugs go, really the only thing that is still there, at least to my knowledge, is green tint. I mean, that was confirmed by multiple messages I received from you guys on 14.5 and 14.6. So unfortunately, 14.6 does not fix the green tint issue. And like I mentioned, you know, months ago, that's probably not going to be fixed until iOS 15, if ever. So, but aside from that, I mean, there's really no outstanding bugs on 14.5 or 14.6 that I've really been facing, which is great. And I mean, we are nearing the end of iOS 14. You know, we're only just over a month away from iOS 15 beta one. So you shouldn't expect too many bugs, but I really have had a great experience on both 14.5 and 14.6. Even for a first beta, I really have no issues. I mean, really no bugs on this device. Now, of course, I haven't used it every single day. That's going to start next week on the iPhone 12 Pro where I use 14.6 beta one every day. But so far with using it every day on my iPad and on my iPhone 12, really not much, you know, to complain about in terms of bugs on this update. And when it comes to the performance, performance is actually excellent here on 14.6. I was very impressed with how well 14.6 beta one performs on both the iPad Pro and this iPhone 12. And if we actually go in and we're gonna do an updated Geekbench test just because everything is finished, you know, all the background processes have finished now so I can get a better read on what the benchmark is here for 14.6. So we're gonna compare this to 14.5 when we come back. So you can see the scores there. We got a 1591 on the single core and a 4097 on the multi-core. So slightly higher than we got on the previous runs of 14.6 on the Geekbench, but you can see it's still not quite on 14.5's level right there, which had a 1599 and a 4079. So it is higher on the multi-core, but the single core, it is a little bit behind on, but still impressive results from a first beta here for 14.6. And as far as the battery life goes, battery life is good here on 14.6 beta one, but I still think it's too early to judge whether it's you know good or better or worse than 14.5. So I'm not gonna say if it's better or worse than 14.5, I'm just gonna say that it's pretty good. I mean, I really didn't notice a difference going from 14.5 to a first beta, the final version of 14.5 to a first beta. So that should tell you something right there. But battery life, again, I can't say if it's better or worse, only because I've only been able to use it for one full day since it did come out late on Thursday. So now let's move on to the community poll. So yesterday I posted this poll right here that says, how have iOS 14.5 RC and iOS 14.6 beta one been running for you so far? And you can see the results here. 17% said excellent, 5% said good, 3% said not so good, and 74% are waiting on the 14.5 public release. And that is, you know, after 9,000, more than 9,000 people voted. So thank you to everybody for voting. And of course, leaving a comment, the comments really helped me here to, you know, be able to tell what issues you guys are having or if it's running good for you. Just, it's really informative to see your guys' comments on these community posts. So thank you for doing that. So we're just gonna read through a couple of them here just before we move on to what's next for Apple. So you can see a lot of people waiting for the release. Someone said, anybody else notice their Wi-Fi dropping on their iPhone 12 mini? I know it's definitely the phone because no issues with the router and my computer never drops the signal as often as 
my phone does. So some people are saying that it started with 14.5 and it persists through 14.6. So pretty interesting there. Smokey the Bear says picture in picture is back for YouTube on 14.5 RC. So yeah, that seems to be something that just Google is, you know, adding and removing for some reason from the YouTube application. Ice God says 14.5 RC runs really well. 11 hours of screen time on the 10R 90% battery health. The bug where the notifications for shortcuts activate themselves after reboot isn't fixed yet, but I guess it'll never be fixed. So I'm not sure what that bug is. So apparently if you were having that bug, it is still not fixed here in the RC. I will test that if I can get more clarification on what it is in 14.6 to see if it's been fixed. Smart Tech says that 14.5 RC is stable, but he is having some bugs and the occasional app crash on 14.6 beta one and Wi-Fi randomly disconnects on the iPhone seven. So not sure about the Wi-Fi disconnecting or the app crashing. I haven't really had any issues with apps crashing. That could just be the developer's fault, not necessarily the software's fault just because they haven't updated it for the beta, but I've not had any app crashes, but I have heard of people having Wi-Fi disconnects. So you are not alone there at all. Battery life got way better. It seems compared to 14.5 RC, but he's still having lag. Zoltan here is still having lag when swiping up on the home bar. So I'm not having issues with that. That was another bug I had in 14.5 early betas, but I didn't have that. I didn't notice it at least in the RC build, but it seems like he's having better battery life, way better battery life on 14.6 beta one. So that is good to hear. And you can see people asking about green tint here. Someone said it's still on the 12 mini, but it is better than 14.4. It's still noticeable, but better than 14.4. So that is proof that it is in the software and that it could be fixed eventually. Mark here says that 14.6 runs well, but he's still having the annoying music cue bug. So, you know, I haven't noticed that yet. I haven't used it for long enough to really notice that, but in my time using it, I haven't had it, but apparently it is still there. And he also said that he hasn't noticed the loud notification yet, other than that smooth sailing. So pretty good for 14.6, but the loud notifications, I'm pretty sure those are not fixed just because that seems to be an issue ever since like iOS 14.0. So I'd be very surprised if that is fixed, but uh, I'll have to check and, you know, keep you guys updated on the music cue bug once I notice it or continue to not notice it on my devices. Still having issues with the call blocking and identification feature disappears and takes 30 seconds or so to reappear. Not sure why. So I am not having that bug, but if you guys are, let me know down in the comments below. Leonardo asked if app tracking transparency works on 14.4.2. No, it does not. It's only on 14.5 and above. And I'm just going to read a couple more here, but you can see Andrew says that on 14.5, his iPhone 11 is inconsistent with battery life and keyboard lag is back. So it seems to be suggesting really odd words that are out of context. So pretty interesting. So if you guys are having that issue, let me know. I've had no issues with keyboard lag in a while and especially not with the auto suggest. So interesting there. Let me know if you guys are having that as well. And I'm just going to read one more here. Let me find a good comment to talk about. Connor here says that in 14.6 beta one on his 2020 iPhone SE, he's having an issue with the AirPods Pro where he plays a YouTube video without them connected. Then mid video, he connects them and it takes about 10 to 15 seconds for audio to start playing. So there is some lag there. Now I have had this issue before, but it seemed to go away. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are still having that issue, let me know with the AirPods that actually happened to me with the AirPods Max and not the AirPods Pro. So it doesn't seem to be an issue with just AirPods Pro. So let me know if you guys are having that and you can see proceeds to say that the battery life has been great and performance feels good as well. So yeah, thank you to everybody who voted and left a comment in that community poll. It really does help me out. But anyways, let's move on to what's next for Apple. So if we go into our calendar here. Next week is going to be very busy for Apple. So 14.5 is going to come out early next week, most likely on the 27th. Apple loves those Tuesday releases for software, but it could be anywhere from the 26th through the 28th. So we are expecting 14.5, the final release on one of those days. Again, my money is on the 27th. Now we could also see 14.6 beta two next week, but that's more likely going to be in the following week in May. And that's because Beta one was released on a late Thursday afternoon there on the 22nd. So, you know, it could come out next Thursday to be one week, but that just really doesn't seem too likely. In my opinion, it could just be on a two week cycle here for 14.6. And then of course on Friday, April 30th is when I will be picking up my air tags and my purple iPhone 12 from the Apple store. And I will bring you guys coverage 
of that, especially on the AirTags. Now also on the 30th is when we'll be able to pre-order the M1 iMac and the M1 iPad Pro. So I will be pre-ordering those as well on next Friday. So really two back-to-back -back weeks of important things for Apple, just releases, announcements, things like that, software and hardware. So really can't wait for next week, especially to get my hands on the new products. And of course, 14.5, we've waited for months for this to get released. So I cannot wait for 14.5 to finally be out to the general public. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my follow-up review on iOS 14.5 RC and iOS 14.6 beta one let me know what you guys think about these software versions down in the comments below of course let me know how they've been running for you battery life performance features all of that good stuff bugs let me know everything down there in those comments below and of course if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my 14.5 final video and of course ios 15 coverage starting in just over a month but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon